All right, we've got our carburetor sitting here on the bench. I'm going to go through now and completely clean this thing out. I am also wearing gloves. I would suggest it. You guys are welcome to comment below and make fun of my gloves. But if you are here smelling this fuel, I do believe you'd be wearing gloves as well. So leave a comment below if you like to wear gloves when you work on carburetors. Leave a comment below if you think it's absolutely ridiculous to wear gloves. But all that to say, I'm wearing gloves because this fuel really stinks. So got our carburetor, got our vent line here. A lot of times you can just take, twist this off of here. We'll set this aside. I'm going to take then, there's three Phillips screws on the bottom of this carburetor, and that's going to remove the bowl. You can actually drain the fuel out of the bowl before you even start this process. The way that you do that, grab a flat screwdriver, remove that uh, screw there, or even just loosen it up. Fuel is going to drain down this bottom nipple here, out this hose, hopefully drain underneath of your engine, not directly onto your engine because it will discolor your engine if that fuel sits on there and drips for any amount of time at all. Also, that being said, so that fuel drain line needs to be unplugged and unclogged at all times because you want that fuel to drain out that bottom tab there so that that fuel isn't running into your air box or your engine, depending on how that carburetor sits on your four-wheeler. If that float gets held open, that fuel is not able to drain out this bottom nipple here. That fuel has got to go somewhere, so it's going to drain into your motor. Could potentially be a dangerous situation for you, or just cause your four-wheeler not to start. Won't even turn over. It just loads that cylinder up with fuel, or it loads your crankcase up with fuel. No matter what, you don't want that to happen, so make sure that this is unclogged. Make sure that this fuel will flow out that bottom nipple there without any problems. And I'll show you what I'm talking about uh, when we get into this carburetor a little bit more as to, to your float sticking. So take a lot of times, uh, especially if this carburetor is gummed up, take and tap that off of there. Be really careful doing that so you don't break any of your uh, parts inside of your carburetor. With that bowl removed now, you can see how filthy and disgusting that carburetor is. We've got a plastic piece here. Make sure I'm going to leave this carburetor here for just a second to allow you to look at where uh, this groove sits. This post here is going to sit right directly in the center of uh, this groove. So when you go to put that uh, this plastic piece back on, just slide it on just like that. Go ahead and set that aside. This obviously needs some serious cleaning. You want to make sure that this O-ring is good. We've got a carb kit on order. Uh, we've got our float here. Now what I was saying about your uh, float sticking, uh, you've got fuel coming in here from your carburetor. That fuel is going to, obviously your carburetor is going to be sitting like this, and I'm just going to tip it up like this. So you know the carburetor sits here. I'm going to tip it up so I can show you what it looks like here on this side. Got fuel coming in here, runs through a port here, comes out. Your float's going to drop down. It's going to work exactly like a toilet bowl. So when it starts filling up, it's going to lift this float up. It's going to then shut that fuel off, and that's your fuel valve that sits underneath of here. So that fuel is going to drain down. This is going to open up. It's going to allow more fuel in. If you have a bad needle valve, which is this, or a float valve, um, you are going to have an issue with fuel constantly draining into your bottom bowl here. And then you hope that it's going to drain out this bottom nipple here. Otherwise, that fuel is going to go into your cylinder. So make sure that your uh, seat is in good condition. Make sure your float valve is in good condition. Make sure you get that all cleaned out. Uh, before going back together. So to remove our float here, I'm going to take, and typically it's uh, your pin goes out this way. I wouldn't say that's always the case depending on how this was put back together originally, but you can take a needle just like this or a pick and take and just tap on it. You do not want to tap too hard because you could break this post off of there. Okay, a lot of times what I'll do if it's not coming, I'll take and set it on um, something uh, like let's take this cap for instance, but obviously going to be something more solid than this. Going to take and set that post right on there to give that back uh, post a little support there. And then you can take and tap on something just like this. This one came out fairly easily. Didn't have to tap very hard at all to get that out. We'll take and pull that the rest of the way out. Set that aside. Now we'll take and pull our needle out. This is not a replaceable seat. So typically you would say needle and seat. This is not a removable seat. So if this is worn out or um, it's it's uh, squared off because this needle's sliding up and down, uh, you just have to replace your 
carburetor. That is a brass insert. You probably could replace that. Sometimes you'll spend more money on that brass insert and the, the labor to replace that. Uh, so you just end up replacing the carburetor. I'll put a link below for a complete carburetor if you need those. I'll also put a link below for the carb kit. Make sure you check those out. That's going to be important for rebuilding these carburetors. You want to make sure you've got a good O-ring. You want to make sure that your, your jets are cleaned out really good. Make sure your, your needle here, your float needle, is in good condition. There's a rubber tip on here. You don't want those rounded or grooved at all uh, because then that's not going to shut the fuel off. Grab a flat screwdriver now and you're going to remove. This is your main jet here, so it's going to be the tallest one. And what's going to a lot of times happen is you're going to pull out this main jet and the main jet holder. So you want to separate the two, grab an 8mm wrench, uh, put your flat screwdriver in here, and turn those out. The, uh, the main jet is you want separate from this piece here, the main jet holder. You want to make sure that all those ports and orifices are cleaned out um, when you're going through and cleaning your carburetor. So we'll separate those before we get uh, into the clean mode here. I'll take this pilot jet. And remove this. I'll also, when I get these cleaned up, I'll tell you what size stock is and what they should be. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this pilot jet here. That's what it looks like. And then this, I believe, because I've already cleaned one of these already on my other recon, is a 38. And I'll double check that for you, but I believe that's a 38. This right here is your air fuel screw. So the way that you would adjust this or set this is turn it in and then count the number of turns out. So my guess is this is going to be about two turns out, maybe one and a half to two turns out. So we'll screw it in. Half turn, one and a half, two, two and about an eight. So eight turn, half, one and a half, two. And that's how you adjust those. You can pull this out. This is not typically a spot where fuel and um, any buildup is going to be. So most of the time you don't need to clean this out. Uh, we do like to remove these, spray through there with compressed air, carbon choke cleaner, make sure all those ports are cleaned out, but typically that's not going to be your issue. If your four-wheeler is not starting, more than likely it is your pilot jet here. Your pilot jet works from zero throttle, so that means not giving it any thumb throttle at the handlebars, all the way up to a quarter throttle. Then your main jet's going to take over. Your main jet and your needle that's still on the four-wheeler is going to take it the rest of the way. So you push your throttle wide open, and that is going to take your needle all the way up. So if your carburetor is sitting this way, that's going to take your, that's going to take that needle, go all the way up, and you're going to allow the most amount of fuel through your main jet here. So if you take and you add a smaller jet here, smaller jet size here, that's going to restrict the amount of fuel that's going to be flowing up into your cylinder. Same way, if you put a larger main jet on here, you give it full throttle or even throttle at all, that's going to allow more fuel to come up through your orifice here and through your venturi. So your choke assembly is here. You can see what it's doing there. When you pull that choke lever, you're actually shutting that flap. What that's doing is sucking all of your fuel through your pilot jet here and um, not as much air. You're not going to have as much air flow through there. And you've got uh, other orifices that air is flowing through, sucking more fuel in, and that is going to be how your four-wheeler starts. So you want to make sure it's important. you got a spring on here on this one. A lot of times they don't have springs, or sometimes those springs wear out. You want to make sure and kick that choke off of there before you start riding, because you're going to be star starving your four-wheeler for air, and uh, actually end up starving it for fuel as well. So I'm going to go through now, pull this diaphragm off of there. I'm going to take this hose and pull it off. Take and slide that off. Now we've got a Phillips uh, right here. We've got two of them. We're going to remove these. And I like to keep my finger over top of this because this is spring loaded. It is a rubber diaphragm underneath of here. You don't want these pieces flying all over the place. We'll go ahead and remove those. So that's just two Phillips screws. There's one. There's two. Got this top cap off of there. There's the cap. There's the spring. And then here is your diaphragm here. You want to make sure that if you're taking removing this that you don't rip or tear it at all. You can see there there's no fuel up in this area here, so nothing to get gummed up, but that's what it looks like there. If you want to inspect that, make sure it's in good condition. Now we've got uh, most of our uh, ports there cleaned out and uh, parts removed. So now I'm going to take 
and throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna get it completely cleaned out. Obviously gonna take these vent lines off of here so we can get for that ultrasonic cleaner to flow through all these ports, make sure it's cleaned out. We're gonna take compressed air then and blow it all out. So that is dismantling the carburetor on a Recon 250. I'll show you as we go back together with it.